Right, so now that we have a basic config for Rilla, let's actually go ahead and start fleshing out our index.js file. So what do we want to do in the end? Well, in the end, we want to basically do something like import React from React. And let's say we had a spinner. So we're going to have a component that accepts some props and returns, let's say, an H1 for now. We're just going to say spinner. And we're going to do an export default of spinner. So let's save the file. And now ignore the underline for a second. But if we go back to the terminal, now if we do npm run build again, it's going to fail because it can't possibly understand the JSX syntax. So there's a few things we have to do. First of all, we need to set up React and Babel in the project. And then the second thing we need to do is we need to make sure to also let ESLint know that we're using React in this project. Now the second one is the easiest between the two. So let's actually go back to Google Chrome. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna search for ESLint plugin React. So now this one will allow us to set up some reasonable defaults for React so that ESLint doesn't bother us. So now to install it, let's copy the name ESLint plugin React back in the terminal. Let's clear it out. I'll do npm install ESLint plugin React. Now back in here, we're gonna copy plugin colon react slash recommended. This one will, like I said, set up some reasonable defaults that we can use. So let's go back in here. I'm gonna go back to ESLint RC JSON file. And now instead of putting a string after the extends key, I'm gonna actually pass in an array. And I'm just gonna add the react plugin to the end of that array. So let's save the file. If we go back to index.js, you're gonna see that the underline is gone now. Because before the issue was that we were importing React, but we were not using React directly. When using JSX, we still have to import React at the top because that JSX syntax will be transformed to React create element calls. Now let's get back to our build setup. So in order to enable the JSX syntax, we first of all have to add Babel plugin to roll up. So let's do that. So let's do npm install dash d of rulup plugin babel. We are also going to install babel slash core. So we're going to be using babel 7. Let's also install babel preset n. Let's also add babel preset react to work with the JSX syntax. So let's install all of those ones. And I'm going to go back to the editor. In the meantime, I'm going to create a babel rc file. So this one will be a JSON file. We're gonna have a bunch of presets. So let's add a few presets. So we're gonna have a babel slash env. And this is a shorthand for preset dash env. I'm also going to add one for react as well. So babel react. And now for the end of preset, I'm actually going to pass in an array. There's a few things I want to configure myself. So I'll pass in an object. We're gonna set up modules to false. Now, let me explain this one in more detail. Now, if we go back to the documentation for babel, let's go to babel js.io. Let's look at preset env and now if I look for modules. And now this key as you can see allows us to control how the ES6 modules are being transformed. So we could either transform them to something like AMD or UMD or common JS which happens to be the default or we could just simply set it to false which means that we're not going to transpile the modules using Babel but in fact we're going to leave that task up to roll up instead. And this in fact happens to be the preferred option because if we transform it to common JS, we're going to lose tree shaking like I explained before. So we're going to set it to false ourselves. We're not going to transpile ES modules using Babel. We're going to leave them as is. The other option I'm going to set up is going to be targets. Now, what this one will allow us to do is to target specific browser markets. So for instance, we can target more than 0.25% of browsers, including IE11, because this will be a library that we export. So we might as well add support for IE11 just in case, but we're going to exclude Opera Mini all and we're going to put not dead to make sure that we don't target any dead browsers. Now this query you can actually copy yourself. So I'm going to copy it and just for a demo, let's go to browser list. There's the website that we can go to and we can basically paste in that query and paste it in to make sure that it's valid. So you can see it's going to target Chrome, Firefox, Edge, IE11 as well. And some of the browsers like Opera and Safari. Now, of course, you could also modify that query to target more modern browsers. So for example, if you want to exclude IE11, you would put not IE11. You could also play with the percentage option. And this will, of course, affect how the bundle is transpiled. And the last one is I'm going to put an option for Node. In this case, I'm going to be targeting Node 10. 
because it's already in LTS. Or once again, if you want to enable support for something older, you might as well put in, let's say, Node 8, like that. Again, this is something you might have to play with, so give it a try. And once again, if you're confused about the options, you could, of course, go back to the docs. Again, in the preset env section, you could read about that in more detail. Of course, you could also create a separate browser list file, but for now, I'm just going to put it in Babel or C. And so what we can do is we can go back to our rollup config file. And so let's have an import of Babel plugin. So we're going to import rollup plugin Babel like that. We're also going to import resolve from rollup plugin node resolve. So now let's go ahead and set up a plugins section. We'll set up plugins. This will be an array. We'll pass in Babel. In fact, let's actually go and look for that plugin. So once you install it, you can pass in an option to exclude node modules from being bundled. We're going to do exactly that. I'm just going to paste in the config object and we can also call resolve. In fact, resolve is something we'll have to put because it's going to help us resolve the dependencies. And if we go back to the terminal, we're going to try to do an npm run build. We're going to see that we got two warnings. One of them talks about the unresolved dependencies. In fact, it points to React import that we have in our source code. And it's also talking about missing global variable name. Now let's deal with them one by one. So the first one talks about unresolved dependencies. If we go back to Google Chrome, in the rollup documentation, you're going to find that there is a key known as external. So if you look at this example over here, it's declaring Lodash as an external dependency. So the reason behind this is that we don't want to bundle the source code of Lodash into our module. So we want to make use of Lodash as a dependency, but we don't actually want to bundle it ourselves. So what we can do is we can declare it as an external dependency. And that way, whoever integrates our package will have to install that Lodash dependency themselves. In fact, there's a name for that type of dependency and it's known as a peer dependency. And also what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a new key. We're gonna call it external and we're gonna specify React as an external dependency. And now for the second warning, this one talks about a missing global variable name because we need to tell rollup that React is going to be a global variable. So we just have to specify some sort of a mechanism to resolve it. Now back in the rollup documentation, there's a globals property that we can specify. So for example, if we were to use jQuery as an external dependency, we would declare it as external. But for the ify bundle or for the UMD bundle specifically, we would also put the globals key. And once again, you would only need to put this if you are targeting a UMD or ify bundles. Because let's say in a common JS bundle, you would simply import it using the require statement. So you don't have to necessarily declare it. But if it's an immediately self-invoked function, or if it's a UMD bundle, you have to be specific about the way that that dependency is going to be resolved. So in a rollup config for the UMD bundle only, we're going to add a globals key. And this one is going to be an object. So we're going to put in react as a dependency. We're going to set it to react uppercase. Now, what does the syntax actually do? So the first one is the key of that object. So react lowercase. This one actually refers to the import of React in our index.js file. So if we had something like, let's say, import React DOM from React DOM, you would have to also copy that React dash DOM package name, and you would also have to add it as a key over here. So you would add something like, let's say, React DOM. You would also have to wrap it with quotes because it's not a valid identifier on its own. And then the second value would be the actual variable in the global context. So if this was being used in a browser, how would the React dependency be resolved? Well, it's going to be usually resolved with window.react uppercase. And if it's a React DOM dependency, it's going to be resolved as window react DOM. So the R in React is capitalized, and then the letters in the word DOM are also capitalized. So because of that, you would also put React DOM like this. And again, this will also match the React DOM import in your index.js file. But in this case, we don't have any React DOM, so I'm just actually going to remove it. So let me clean it up. So we're actually only going to have a global definition for React. Now, if I go back to the terminal, let's do an npm run build once again, and it looks like it succeeded. So now if we look at the files in our dist folder, well, the first thing is you're going to see an underline, which is coming from ESLint. Now, once again, this is only going to happen if you have the ESLint extension enabled. And the same thing actually applies to Prettier as well. So you have to make sure that those two are installed. But in some cases, they're going to be applied to files that you don't necessarily want to be linted or prettified. So what we can do in this case is we can create a .eslint ignore file. In this file, we're going to add the dist folder. In fact, let's also add node modules like this. So I'm going to copy this and I'm actually going to create another file. So let's call it .prettier ignore. We're going to copy the same two folders in there. So once again, for the eslint ignore file, this will ignore any files in a dist or node modules directory from being linted. 
And the same thing will also apply to Prettier. So Prettier will not prettify any files in these two directories. And on the same note, we can actually go to gitignore and let's also add the disk directory to gitignore as well. So that way we won't accidentally push the disk directory to our source code. Now, if I go back to the bundle common JS file, as you can see here, we get our component and it's being exported using the common JS syntax in the bundle esm.js file. We get the same component, but it's being exported using ES modules. So this way we'll enable tree shaking eventually. And now for the UMD bundle, this is the heaviest file among the three. And this one will obviously reference the React dependency. It's going to create a spinner and it's going to return it. So it's going to do its own UMD uh, style syntax export. Now, if you take a look at any of the three bundles, you're actually going to see that the source code is not minified. And that's the one thing that we forgot to do. So in order to do that, we could use a plugin. So one thing we could do is we could use the Uglify plugin. So there's a rollup plugin Uglify. And now this one allows you to Uglify and mingle the source code when it's being bundled. But the downside of this plugin is it doesn't actually work for ES6. And you can even see a warning over here that Uglify.js is only able to transpile ES5 syntax. And if you indeed want to transpile ES6 syntax, please use Cursor plugin instead. So Cursor is very, very similar. It does the same job of uglifying your code and minifying it to reduce the bundle size. But the difference is that it can actually work with ES6 plus syntax. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy the name Let's go back to the terminal. I'll clear it out and then I'm gonna do an npm install of that dependency. So in this case, roll up plugin cursor. So now to use it, let's go back to the editor. We're gonna import it. So we'll have an import of cursor from roll up plugin cursor. And now we could obviously put the plugin in here. So let's say cursor to the array of plugins, but it might also be useful to only minify the code for production. So let's create a variable, we're gonna call it production. If the production variable is set to true, we're gonna minify the code, but otherwise we're gonna skip that step. So to create that variable, I'm gonna put production. To determine if we are indeed in a production mode, we can take a look at process dot env.rollup underscore watch variable. And so if that variable evaluates to true, then we are in development. But if not, it means that we're in production. So I'm gonna put the exclamation point in front of it. And in fact, now that I'm looking at it, the bundle keyword is actually being duplicated as well. So let's actually create a variable for it too. So we created one for dist. Let's also add one for bundle. So on the same notes, I'll just go ahead and replace bundle. It's gonna do the same exact thing. It's just that it's gonna be more configurable. And let's go back to the terminal. I'll clear it out. Let's do npm around build. And the bundle is built this time. So now if we go back and take a look at it, you're gonna see that this time all of the code will be minified. And so this one, in fact will reduce the bundle size as well. And this is an upside of course, because we want to ship the smallest amount of code as possible. All right, so with that, we should be good to go. So let's do a get status. So I'm gonna add all of those files and I'm gonna do a commit of, let's say add rollup and babel with react. And this will run the lint command. And once that's done, we can do a git push to a repo and we should be good to go.